there Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Bosx Bounty video and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Star Wars The Vintage Collection Morgan Elsbeth figure from the Ahsoka series. Now for anybody that hasn't seen the Ahsoka series you may still be familiar with this character because she was in The Mandalorian. I think it was season two she was in. She was the original owner of the Beskar Spear and you know the rest is history but let's have a look at the card back. So there she is. Um, as I say, I don't really want to spoil the Ahsoka show for anyone that hasn't seen it, but essentially she's one of the main baddies in the show. And uh, she's kind of like a, a witch, I guess. She's got special powers. And uh, on the back of the card there, we've got VC295 in the line. I have already reviewed the Grand Inquisitor. I've already reviewed the HK87 Assassin Droid. And I've already reviewed Grand Admiral Thrawn. I've still got the Luke Skywalker to go. I'm not going to be bothering with Ahsoka Tano because it's exactly the same figure that we got in the uh, in the deluxe pack and on the single card from the Mandalorian. Having said that, the Luke Skywalker is pretty much the same as well, but I will I will review that figure. Um, and there we go. There she is. It's a pretty good card back. I mean, I don't think that shot is something that's fr directly from the show, but it's kind of like a Photoshop and it's, you know, it looks pretty good. And there she is in the bubble. And we're going to be getting into this figure very very soon and you know the lack of accessories you can see there it is literally just a figure in a bubble there are no accessories for this figure and we'll get into it a little bit later about what they could have included and uh just a pre-warning that may contain some spoilers if you haven't seen the show uh, so that is it there's the ahsoka logo of course this figure will go very nicely with the hk87 assassin droids that we've that we've already have and there you go Let's do it. All right then, so here is Morgan Elsbeth out of the packaging. And before we take a really good close-up look at her, I just want to put her in a very simple pose here so you can just take a look at the figure in all its glory. And as far as I know, this is a fully newly tooled figure. Every part of this figure is new, I think. I haven't had a look at the legs too closely, but it looks all new to me. And of course, with that, you know, potentially other female figures could potentially be made, especially with the legs and everything. So we'll have to see what they do uh, potentially in the future but this is Morgan Elsbeth she looks pretty accurate to the source material and yeah let's just take a look at her close up okay then so here is the head sculpt close up and I've got to say it is a really really good likeness which is often the case now with these new figures that we're getting in the vintage collection even though it's a small scale 3.75 you know I do think that they do a really really good job with these new figures now in terms of the head sculpt and often they are better than their black series counterparts in my opinion uh, but you can see she's got some really good makeup going on there. She's got the little makeup on the forehead, which is the part of her design. And you can see the two-tone in her hair. It's mainly grey, but there's some darker grey at the front and everything. And I think that's pretty accurate to the, to the source material, as I said before. You can see she's got like an overshirt there with a belt going around with the undershirt, which has got lots of sort of wrappings and everything going on. And the arms look pretty good as well. Some nice sculpting going on and also the paintwork as well, giving you that two-tone of like a purple and a red. But the best thing about this figure for me is the soft goods skirt. It's got like this crimping effect on it and the pattern on it is really good as well. Again, I think it's pretty screen accurate to the source material. We'll just lift up the skirt here <laughs> quickly just to see what the legs look like. And yeah, they've got that sort of wrapping on the legs. Not too sure if you get to see her legs in the show. I can't really remember. So, it, you know, I'm not going to say that these are exactly like that. But, um, you know, as I say, these may be able to be used for another figure in the future. But I really do like the soft goods because I say they've got this like crimping effect going on it. And it's a really nice material. So they've done really, really well with that. And you can see the back of the figure there. You've got the buns on the hair. And the belt. And yeah, I think it's just a really, really good figure. Now... Obviously, as I said before, there are no accessories that come with this figure, which to me is a bit of a shame. Spoiler alert. So later on in the series, she is um, kind of like possessed or even killed by the Night Sisters. And she basically becomes one of them. And then she is given a uh, like sword. I can't remember what the sword is called, but it's a sword that seems to come out of thin air and created for her. And it has like a green glow to it. Now, had Hasbro have known that this was going to happen towards the end of the series, then I think she could have, you know, had that included. Then if you did that, you'd have to change her makeup slightly and the face and everything because she essentially looked dead. Uh, she's more of like a, a zombie. So I'm not too sure if they could have done that, but it still would have been nice to include that. And then, as I say, it's whether they knew about that at the time of making this figure. 
if they didn't know about that, then really I think they should have included something at least uh, from the early part of the show. Maybe the map sphere ball thing that which she sort of carried around, which they were searching for at the beginning of the show. I think they, at the very least they could have given her that or maybe even the little table or something that she plugs it into. Just something to add to the figure just to give it a bit more value. Because at the end of the day, what you're getting here is a very small female uh, figure. So it's not as big in terms of the amount of plastic it's used or anything. But you're getting nothing else with it. So the value proposition of this versus, I don't know, like maybe um, Tatooine Boba Fett, for example, where you're getting, you know, a much bigger figure, loads of accessories, soft goods and all that kind of stuff. And then you're getting this figure that's got nothing. It's, this is how it comes, just this figure. I mean, of course, we want Morgan Elsbeth in the line. She's an important character in the Ahsoka show. She is also in The Mandalorian. So it is a good figure to have in the line. As I say, it would have just been nice if it had come with some accessories, um, just to sort of up that value proposition for it. Because I've got a feeling that this might be the weakest one from the wave, in my opinion. Maybe the Luke. I mean, the Luke will probably sell itself because it's Luke Skywalker. But essentially, a lot of people may have already bought that figure because he came out in the deluxe pack with all the floating frogs and things like that. And you get a Grogu in there as well. Um, so some people may skip that one if they've already bought the deluxe pack. Of course, carded collectors will want the, the Luke. But um, yeah, I've got a feeling this might be the weakest of, of the lot, unfortunately. But in terms of the figure itself, it's a really, really nice figure. It looks like who it's supposed to look like. And from that point of view, I'm quite happy with it. So before we go, let's just take a look at the articulation very quickly. The head is on a barbell, as we always know these days. The shoulders are on ball hinges. We have hinges at the elbows. I don't think we have hinges at the wrists because they are very, very slim wrists, as we know, on these female characters. We have some kind of ball there on the upper torso and a swivel at the lower torso or the waist. And then underneath, we do have the barbell hips. And we have the split at the thigh, we have a nice knee joint, and we have rocker ankles as well. So she has all of the modern articulation that you're going to need. She does engage in some decent fight scenes, especially in The Mandalorian. So um, I believe she's related to Bruce Lee in real life as well, the actress. So, so there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd be interested to know your thoughts. Of course, I'm sure you've all got opinions about the accessories and how they could have made this figure a bit more appealing in terms of the value. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and channel members. Your support means a great deal to me. So thank you so much. And we shall see you on the next one.